So in this video, we're going to transmit an audio source to a radio station. So basically the opposite of receiving. So I've opened up a new flow graph here to, because basically we're going to be doing what we did for the, re, uh, for the receive, but backwards because we're going to be going from a file source to the HackRF, which will then transmit it. So we're once again in our blank spreadsheet. First thing I want to do is change the sample rate to um, 2 million. Um, and then we need something to actually transmit. What we can use is a WAV file source. Now a WAV file source can be any .wav file. I have one on the desktop called radio test that we can use for this. Now there's something important to know about what you download is um, we downloaded this file, the radio test, but um, every WAV file is gonna ha might have its own um, audio rate. So the way you can check that is by right clicking on it and going to properties. And if I just bring this over here, you go to audio, you can see that this has a sample rate of 22,050 hertz, which is half of 44.1 um, kilohertz, which is what most WAV files will be in. Some will be double this, some will be half the, or double a 41,000, some will be 44.1, and some will be half. So just keep in mind what you're doing, because if you don't set it up correctly, it may it may speed up or slow down the playback of your audio because it might be sending more samples than there actually are in the file. So say if you're, if it's sending 22,050 samples per second and you're having it play at 44,000, you're gonna be sending twice as many samples and it's gonna be sped up twice as much. So you wanna keep that in mind when you are looking for what you need to do. So after you have that, we need to set up a WVFM transmit instead of receive. Now, if you remember the receive, it went from blue to orange. This is gonna go from orange to blue. And it's mostly the same option, except we have an audio rate and a quadrature rate. And these need to be the same from what I've seen. So we're gonna set them both to 88.2 thousand. Um, this is four times as much as the regular, or as the audio rate that was in there, but what these two are doing are setting how it's going to sound when we actually play it to the radio station. And this much will get us a pretty clear signal. The lower it is, the more distorted your signal will be. So keep that in mind. You kind of you want to keep it a multiple of 44.1 thousand of some sort. And the problem is if we go too high, it'll be very, very quiet. So you got to kind of find that balance between how loud you want it to be and how good you want the audio quality to be. You're also going to set the tau to 25 negative, or e to the negative six. And this will just help us make it a little louder so that we can hear it more clearly. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is another rational resampler. Now technically what I could do with this, is like I could do in a multiply constant block, but I like using the rational resampler because if you need to change something, it is easy to just double the decimation if you need to. So I'm gonna set the interpolation to 90. And the reason I'm gonna set it to 90 is because we need to get to about 2 million for because of our sample rate, which is what our HackRF will be transmitting at. If you take our rate in here and multiply it by 90, you're going to be getting pretty close to 2 million, although we're not entirely there yet. Um, now, next thing we need to do is we're gonna set up a slider, which is a GUI range again. And what the slider is gonna do, we're gonna call it frequency, is it's going to set what station we are broadcasting to. So our default value is going to be 87.76, which is the lowest end of it. We'll make our starting value of that as well. And the highest of the FM frequency is 107.7 E6. And once again, we're going to make steps 
of 200,000 because that is the width of an FM radio channel. So now we are a, we're going to be able to change what station we are broadcasting to. And the last thing we need is just an Osmocom sync instead of a source, which will allow the hacker app to transmit these signals. Now you're going to see our sample rate here is what we needed, what, why we needed to multiply by 90, because otherwise it's going to be sped up. So we are about where we need to be. Uh, we're going to set the channel zero frequency to just free, because that's what we want to change on the fly. Now, I did mess this up because these are um, integers you can't use, um, can't use scientific notation because it thinks you are inputting a decimal even though you're technically not, because you're doing 88.2 E3. So now, if we connect all of this, we should be able to hear this come through on 87.7 because that's what we are transmitting to. So I gotta save it. I'll save this as tutorial two. And once our flow graph gets running. Johnson White's program with Vivian McGee and Molly. We'll be able to control from the radio. Now if I change the radio station to say 87, 88.3. Station to 88.3. They'll be transmitting on that radio station. Now the hacker F is obviously not a very doesn't have a very strong antenna, so we're not broadcasting that signal out. But if we were to go to an actual radio station and play it. Uh, and transmit our signal, it would it would overcome that signal because our antenna is right next to our radio that we have here. And that's all you need to do to transmit from a file source that you download from wherever to the radio station. And what we're going to do in the next video is take a file so a um a small audio sample from a video or from a, um, from a radio station and then retransmit that small clip back to a different radio station.